CompTIA A Plus Core 1 Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 2.1 Compare and Contrast Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, and User Datagram Protocol, or UDP, ports, protocols, and their purposes. Ports and protocols. In this video, we're going to explore some of the most common networking protocols and port numbers. Whether you're new to this topic or looking to refresh your knowledge, you're in the right place. My goal isn't to make you an expert by the end of this video, but to provide you with a basic understanding of each protocol's main purpose and their associated default port number, as that will be sufficient enough knowledge for this stage in your certification journey. To kick things off, let's start with the File Transfer Protocol, commonly known as FTP. This is a standard network protocol designed for transferring files between devices over a network connection. Essentially, FTP enables users to upload files from their local computer to a remote server or download files from a server to their computer. While FTP is a popular choice for its efficiency in file transfer, it's important to note that it has significant security limitations, particularly because it does not encrypt data. FTP typically uses two ports, port 20 and port 21. Port 21 is used for establishing a connection between the client and the server, often referred to as the control port. Through this port, commands and responses are exchanged. Port 20, on the other hand, is known as the data port, and it's used for the actual transfer of files. The lack of encryption in FTP means that data, including potentially sensitive information like usernames and passwords, is transmitted in plain text. This makes it vulnerable to interception and unauthorized access. Moving on to the next protocol in the CompTIA A Plus Core 1 exam objectives, we have Secure Shell, or SSH. This protocol provides a secure method for accessing a remote computer or server. It's widely used for executing remote commands through the command line interface, or CLI. SSH stands out for its robust security, encrypting all data to prevent unauthorized access. It primarily operates on port 22, which handles both the secure connection establishment and encrypted data transfers. This encryption ensures the confidentiality of all communications, including login details. Next up is Telnet, a protocol that shares many similarities with SSH, but with a key difference. It lacks security features. Telnet is another method used for accessing remote computers or servers, allowing users to remotely log into another computer over a network and execute commands. However, Telnet transmits all data, including login credentials, in plain text, making it susceptible to eavesdropping and unauthorized access. This lack of encryption starkly contrasts with SSH, which secures data transmission. Typically, Telnet operates on port 23. Its unsecured nature makes it less ideal for sensitive operations, especially in environments where data security is a priority. Continuing on, we have Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP. This protocol is used for sending emails from a client to a server or between servers. When you compose an email and click send, your email client uses SMTP to transfer that email to the desired email server for delivery. There it is stored until the recipient checks their inbox. While SMTP effectively handles the sending of emails, it does not encrypt them, which can be a concern for confidentiality. As for the protocol's default port, it operates primarily on port 25. Next, we have Domain Name System, or DNS, which is a fundamental protocol of the internet, often likened to a phone book for the World Wide Web. Its primary function is to translate domain names, which are easy for humans to remember, into IP addresses, which computers use to identify each other on the network. DNS operates mainly on port 53. This port is used for both querying DNS servers and receiving responses. For instance, when you type a website URL into your browser, 
DNS servers use port 53 to find the corresponding IP address and direct your request to the correct server. Let's now explore DHTP or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This network management protocol is used to, to automate the process of configuring devices on IP networks. Essentially, DHCP allows network devices, like computers and printers, to automatically obtain IP addresses and other necessary network configurations. This makes it much easier to manage large networks, where assigning IP addresses manually would be impractical. DHCP operates primarily on two ports, port 67 and 68, and utilizes a four-step process known as DORA, Discover, Offer, Request, and Acknowledge to automate network configuration. Initially, a client device seeking network access sends a Discover message on port 68, signaling its need for an IP address. A DHCP server, listening on port 67, responds with an offer message, proposing an available IP address and other configuration details. The client device then sends back a request message, essentially accepting the offered settings. Finally, the DHCP server completes the process by sending an acknowledge message, confirming the IP address and network settings assignment. Another protocol worth mentioning is TFTP or Trivial File Transfer Protocol. TFTP is a simpler version of the traditional file transfer protocol, or FTP. It's designed to transfer files over a network in a more lightweight manner. TFTP is commonly used for tasks that require less complexity, like transferring small files or booting network devices. One of the key characteristics of TFTP is that it operates without guaranteed data packet delivery, which is a built-in feature of FTP. This makes TFTP faster, but less reliable. TFTP uses port 69 for transferring data. And for one more detail, just like FTP, TFTP lacks security features. It doesn't offer authentication or encryption, meaning the data transferred is vulnerable to interception and unauthorized access. Shifting our focus once again, we now have the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. This protocol is the foundation of data communications across the World Wide Web. It's used for transmitting web content from web servers to web browsers. Whenever you enter a website URL or click on a web link, HTTP is the protocol facilitating that web page retrieval and display. HTTP typically operates on port 80 and is another protocol that does not offer encryption for its data which means that information sent and received through HTTP can potentially be intercepted and viewed by others. Next in our exploration of network protocols, we have another email protocol. This one is POP3, short for Post Office Protocol version 3, and is used for email retrieval. It's one of the oldest methods used by email clients to retrieve messages from an email server. When you set up your email account on a client, POP3 can be one of the protocols you choose for downloading your emails. Operating on port 110, POP3 is designed for simplicity and supports basic email functionalities. It allows the email client to download all messages from the server to the local device, and once downloaded, these emails are deleted from the server. This makes it a good option for users who prefer to access their emails from a single device. It's important to note that in its standard form, POP3 does not encrypt the email data it retrieves. This can pose a security risk, especially when accessing emails over unsecured or public networks. As we continue our exploration of network protocols, we turn our focus to NetBIOS, or Network Basic Input-Output System. This protocol is a key player in local area networks, primarily facilitating tasks like file sharing and printer access within smaller networks. NetBIOS operates using multiple ports, with each serving a specific function. Port 137 is designated for name services, essential for the identification of networked computers. 
Meanwhile, port 139 is involved in session services, enabling the establishment and maintenance of network connections between devices. While NetBIOS is highly useful in small-scale network environments, it is not designed to handle the complexities of modern, large-scale internet networking. Now we have one more email protocol to cover. IMAP, or Internet Message Access Protocol, is a modern, synchronized way of handling emails. When you use IMAP, your email client remains connected to the email server. Instead of downloading and removing the emails, IMAP keeps your emails stored on the server while syncing them with your email client or multiple clients. If you haven't deduced this already, the main advantage of IMAP is that you can access your emails from multiple devices like your workstation, laptop, or smartphone, and they'll always be in sync. Any changes you make on one device, like reading, replying, or deleting emails, are reflected on all your devices. Next, we have SNMP, or Simple Network Management Protocol. This protocol is used for monitoring and managing network devices and is instrumental in gathering information from and configuring various network devices like routers, switches, servers, printers, and more. SNMP is particularly valuable in large-scale network environments where constant monitoring and adjustments are necessary for maintaining network health and performance. SNMP primarily operates on ports 161 and 162 for sending requests from the manager to the managed devices or agents and receiving responses from these agent devices. Another protocol available for use is LDAP, or Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. This is a protocol used for managing and accessing information in a network. It's like a phone book for a network, helping to organize and find information about network resources such as users and services. LDAP uses port 389 to communicate. It allows network administrators to quickly find and manage information about users and resources on their network. This is especially useful in large organizations with lots of users and network services. Now it is time to take another look at HTTP, which is the protocol that facilitates communications across the World Wide Web or Internet. But this time we will add some security. HTTPS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. It's essentially HTTP with an added layer of security. This protocol is used for secure communication across the World Wide Web. HTTPS encrypts the data being sent and received, which is crucial for protecting sensitive information like logging credentials, personal information, and payment details. The primary port for HTTPS is port 443. When you visit a website with HTTPS, the connection between your browser and the web server is encrypted. This encryption helps to prevent eavesdroppers from being able to intercept the data being transferred, ensuring that your browsing and personal data remain private and secure. Great job for making it this far. Just two more protocols to go for this video. Next is SMB. SMB, which stands for Server Message Block, is a network communication protocol used primarily for providing shared access to files, printers, and serial ports among devices on a network. It's most commonly seen in Windows environments, where it facilitates the easy sharing of files and printers within a local area network. SMB commonly operates on port 445 with modern network configurations, one of the key features of SMB is its ability to allow computers within the same network to read and write to files and to request services from servers in a computer network. The protocol can also authenticate and authorize access to network resources, making it a versatile protocol for network administrators. And for our last protocol, we have RDP or Remote Desktop Protocol. This is another method used for accessing remote computers or servers, much like SSH and Telnet. It allows users to remotely log into another computer over a network connection. However, 
RDP stands out by providing a graphical user interface or GUI for the remote connection. This means that users can see and interact with the desktop environment of the remote computer as if they were sitting right in front of it. RDP is extensively used in corporate environments for remote administration, remote work, and providing IT support. RDP primarily operates on port 3389. It facilitates the full desktop experience, including support for windows, graphics, and devices over a network connection. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.